With some of the great plays picked by you guys last week, I would have thought the race would have been much closer than it turned out to be. The Facebook fans going with the sentimental choice made by Phil Shane. Raul's goal at his testimonial wins top place. Nice goal, but I thought for sure, Ian, your choice of Kevin Beauregard would have been. Oh, as, as Phil's not here, didn't I win? Third. <laughs> <laughs> you might say so. This well, at least we did, we did not, Ray. The name Everton well, should have won. The goalie anyway. is not the last one, though. All right, I'm let's move along. This that. week's choices for top plays are coming up. You can argue then. Uh, we're now very happy to be joined by a man uh, known quite well to U.S. soccer fans. Gentlemen, please give a warm welcome to Corey Gibbs. Hey, welcome, Corey. Hey, thanks for having me. Corey played overseas in the Eredivisie, a German second division, and made over 100 appearances. Bundesliga, thank you very much, Germany. St. Pauli was in the Bundesliga at the time. <laughs> Major League Soccer. He also made 19 appearances with the U.S. men's national team between 2003 and 2006. And, Corey, that's where we're going to start. Uh, since it is a World Cup qualifying week, uh, what has impressed you most about the current setup for the U.S. men's national team with the great run that they're on? I just think Jurgen has a team in form right now. You know, they're really peaking, but my biggest concern are they peaking too high at the wrong moment. You know, can they keep this going on for, for the rest of throughout qualifications? And, of course, we should all expect them to make the World Cup. So um, the team's in form. Josie's on the top of his game. Mm -hmm. um, the experienced players, Demarcus Bleasy, Landon Donovan, who's just come back on its squad, has really gathered this team together. And I think... They've used their experience and, and built the team well. And then the younger guys have followed on and done their roles. Hey. Well, for me, from my point of view, being a defensive player yourself and obviously narrowly missing out because of injury at 2006 World Cup, what is the pairing that you fancy best in that central defensive area for the United States? Because I've got to say, they've looked a little suspect. Listen, that was my biggest question mark for the squad. They, yep. They're great in every aspect of, on the field. But right now, I'd have to say Omar Gonzalez and Matt Beasley. They're, they're, really thin, to be honest, you know, and I think that pairing right now probably solidifies their central defense. Is there a problem, Corey, with the huge amount of players that have been used? I'm a big advocate for the fact that he's been able to use all of his time to use a big squad, but I think he's called up 61 players since we began 2013 across the competitions. Is, there, is it better to be involved in a tight-knit squad or a bigger squad with no, development? I, I, listen, I, I totally agree with the bigger squad. It's we had that type of structure under Bruce Arena when I was there. A lot of players got called in. And it's really testing out and feeling out who's the right fit at the moment. And then there's a certain time period, which Jurgen definitely knows, which Bruce Arena knew and the coaches before them, where it says, OK, this is our group. This is what I'm going to go with, the 23-man, 20 or 30-man roster leading up to the World Cup. And then you cut down to where the World Cup team is going to be formed at that time. I think this is one of the first times, Corey, that we're discussing uh, players who shouldn't be in the United States team rather than should. I mean, there's such an abundance of talent now. Yeah, um, I totally agree. I should probably not answer that question. <laughs> 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 who shouldn't be there? I don't want to get myself in trouble. But I think Jurgen is smart enough where he's weeding out those type of players. Let me ask you, no uh, as a defender, and as a tremendous defender, that I try to say <laughs> for the Miami Fusion <laughs> in MLS, which I did, me and Doug Hamilton, rest in peace, try to say Corey in MLS wouldn't budge on the stupid budget. And uh, we regretted that because you're a local lad. But um, you, as a defender, Ian as well, what's the forward lane that Klinsman put together that you would strike fear into you? He's got, he's got a number of players to pick from, which would be the three that you say you don't want to face them. Well, you mean the players up top that yeah. he's going to go... I mean, we have to start off, of course, Josie Altidore okay. um, to lead it off. I think Eddie Johnson has really solidified himself in the mm. squad right now. Fast. Um, you could play him out wide, you could put him up top, but he's definitely in, in that three. Mm. And um, Landon Donovan. Yeah. You have to really put those three as a pinnacle for the, sure. the players up top for the, for the U.S. So here's a question. Josie's not looking too healthy right now. Yeah. Who does he go with instead of Josie? Eddie Johnson. Got to go with Eddie and Landon. Yeah, it's, it's hands down. I think Eddie is favorite to be up top. For my, you know, that's what I would say. In terms of what, I mean, there, you know, six, seven months ago, we're talking about Jurgen Klinsmann possibly getting fired, being <laughs> under so much pressure. And I mean, it seems crazy to think about that now, but based on what we've seen since that period, the run that the U.S. is on, is it too soon to say that Jurgen Klinsmann is one of the best coaches the U.S. men's national team has ever had? It's too soon. It's definitely too soon. He's doing well. He's had a stretch where he's doing well. I go back again, Bruce Arena. He had a stretch with us at one time. We were probably seventh in the world at the time. Every coach goes through their stretch. Um, he's new to the squad and he's a new coach, so it's definitely going to take time to say, is he the best coach ever for the U.S.? Do I rate him as one of the top coaches, what he's done so far? Yes. And I like his personality. I like what he's transmitted into the team and into the squad. And the players really respect him after talking to all the players. And his, his personality comes across, across well. Corey, you played over in Europe and you played here in the MLS. If yeah. you compare those different 
kinds of football? Is there any difference? Uh, what did you like better or what did you would like to see in the MLS? I think Ian could vouch for this also or all of you who had experiences. It's, it's a different level. I think the pressures behind playing in Europe and at the top level are a lot higher than it is in MLS. But we have to admit, MLS is growing. Mm -hmm. You know, I think the, the base and the core of players is getting better to make a lot more pressure on the top players. It's not like how it was before where you could get away to play in five or six or seven bad games. We now see DP designated players on the bench, mm -hmm. you know, Chicago Fire being a prime example where they just released uh, McDonald, Sharon McDonald. Um, so it has increased and has gotten better, but I think the pressures in terms of playing at a good level consistently is a lot higher in Europe. And tactically and technically and all the aspects are just that much higher yeah, so, in and playing in Europe. And that's exactly what Jurgen is exactly demanding what is. from the players. And so I yeah. think that's the improvement we see recently would, would in, the, in the US team, yeah. right? Hold on, I've got one for you. So did you ever think mm. we'd ever see the day that we would see an American DP player playing in Major League Soccer? I mean, look at Clint, look at Omar, and of course Landon we knew would probably be the first one, which he was. But did you ever see that maybe a central defender like Omar Gonzalez would get the contract that he got? I didn't see it coming this early. <laughs> we know the league's growing, it's getting better, and the pool's getting better. But it just shows how the MLS is growing, and it's good to see those younger type players getting DP deals. And I think it's well-deserved. From your experience, though, you went to Europe at a very young age. Mm -hmm. Should Omar have done that? I know he went to Nuremberg and the injury happened. But should he have maybe have gone now? When he's playing well, he's healthy, he's proven that. Or do you think it's a patience game for him? Everybody has their own path. I personally feel if you have that chance to play in Europe at a young age, go for it. But what is going over there and not playing? You know, you're going to go over there and if you don't have the backing behind something, you need to make sure that you're going to go over there with a perspective of I'm going to be a starter. I'm going to be honest with you. When I came out of college, my first instinct, my first choice was to be with Ray Hudson and Miami Fusion. That was my ultimate goal. Um, unfortunately, things didn't work out for certain yeah. reasons, and I went over to um, St. Pauli. And Even better decision, by the way. Definitely. <laughs> and what? did I expect <laughs> it? That just shows you how it, the big It, it shows how my path wonderful. went. Did I expect to play immediately? No. You know, but with that drive and that hunger and that determination of, of, of succeeding, that got me to play after my third game, I think, and ever since. So everybody has their own path, path to answer your question. Yeah. And I think Omar Gonzalez's path is the one he's taken and the road that he's taken, and he's been successful at it so far. Okay, Brilliant. Corey, we have, to, uh, we have to end it there, unfortunately. I've had a great time. Thanks. Yeah, <laughs> it's quick and painless, right? I guess. Corey Gibbs, uh, thanks very much for taking the time to join us. We know that you live close by, so know that you're welcome to pop Thank by you. anytime you want to have thanks a chat. Thanks for having with. me. Uh, defender Corey Gibbs, former U.S. Men's National Team defender Corey Gibbs. Thanks for having me, Corey. Yes. It is time for another break here on The Locker Room, but when we come back, the U.S. team is assembled in Miami to begin preps for their match against Costa Rica on Friday. We'll discuss that when The Locker Room returns exclusively here on Be In Sport.